So I have uh, created five different scenarios where you have a Fire Monkey HD application and uh, demonstrating how you could uh, actually w create an, such an application to work with uh, local data. Uh, the second scenario is a situation when the Fire Monkey is a client uh, to a traditional relational uh, database uh, uh, system. In this scenario, using interbase uh, database. So, in this first scenario, our Fire Monkey application is going to be client to to cloud API. Now, in Delphi XC2, we have a new cloud API interface. So now you can also store data in uh, Amazon Web Services. I'm going to store data in Amazon Web Services Simple Storage Service. In the fourth applicative scenario, we are going to see that uh, FireMonkey can be also client to uh, arbitrary uh, SOAP XML Web Services. And now with uh, SOAP services, you can talk not only to, to uh, Delphi Web Servers, but also to WCF applications. Uh, to uh, Java Enterprise uh, Edition uh, servers and so on. In the fifth last scenario, I'm going to demonstrate that uh, FireMonkey can be also client to data snap servers. So this is uh, our own uh, RAD Studio Enterprise technology. So data snap is a multi-tier architecture for creating scalable uh, systems. So I'm going to demonstrate storing data using data snap server, but also uh, using um, data snap callbacks, so we can have uh, clients having a peer-to-peer -peer communication. Uh, so in the first scenario, uh, I'm using uh, just a client data set. So this is a client data set uh, that contains some uh, employee information. Uh, so this originally, this data comes from the um, Marine Adventures demo. So this is a table, employee table. So I just have a client data set a component with a data source attached to it and using uh, live bindings connecting data uh, to the string grid using a live binding so I have a special DB string grid uh, employee so you can see there are different uh, live bindings expressions for different uh, columns so in this scenario uh, what we are really doing is to uh, work uh, in with data locally so when I'm actually going and changing some data, so I can actually say, for example, not forest field, but maybe David I. So inter Simoni. So we have David as one of the employee in our marine adventures. Uh, so probably there must be something uh, related to coding there. So you can actually uh, save data uh, locally. So now we notice this new bind navigator component that also contains uh, apply buttons. So you can actually uh, apply changes to the in-memory data. And using save to file, I can actually now click on save to file. Uh, if I go away from this application, uh, try to rerun it and uh, load from file, I should now see that my changes uh, has been persisted. Uh, in this scenario, you can see there is not so much code. I have only two methods provided by the uh, client data set, so I can persist uh, data to a uh, local on this XML file, and I can load this data uh, back to the application. Moving uh, to the second scenario. Uh, and uh, in this uh, scenario, I'm going to use a in remote uh, interbase database. So in this scenario, I have a, a SQL connection component uh, pointing to uh, my master SQL uh, database. Then I have a SQL table component. So this is a unidirectional DB Express dataset component that is connected to, to my connection. And also, you can specify which table uh, it works with. So I have a SQL table. Then I have a DSP employee. So this is a dataset provider a component that acts as a link uh, to a client dataset. And this is the same client dataset that I have used uh, in the previous example, I can actually uh, click on active uh, to see data at uh, design time. The client data set component is a part of any client application. Uh, you can use it to talk to any provider. So this could be an XML provider or a data set provider. So uh, this client data set knows how to interact with a data set provider. It knows how to retrieve data from a provider and apply updates. Uh, in this scenario, uh, I can just uh, run my uh, application. I can 
and do uh, some changes to data. So maybe I'm going to change the Lee to be Bruce Lee so I can make sure that I'm working with this right data. So I, I click on Save to uh, DB. And now if I actually run this application, if I make the this inactive and active again, so the change uh, has been persisted. So in my third application, uh, I have my uh, form as it uh, was before. Uh, so now I have a client data set, I have a, a data source, and also those uh, live bindings components uh, to work with data. But now I have a, a possibility to save to cloud and load from cloud. I really need a functionality to be able to store just text to cloud or retrieve some text to cloud. So this text could be an XML uh, data packet of my uh, client data set. So, to, so as a part of this demo, uh, I have a separate uh, data module called uh, DM Cloud One uh, that contains an um, Amazon uh, connection info. So this is a component where I need to specify my username and my password. And also what I'm using it for uh, is to actually provide a possibility to upload to a predefined bucket and the predefined uh, file name on the cloud arbitrary string. So I have two methods. Uh, so there is a one method uh, load from cloud and one method uh, save to cloud that takes an arbitrary uh, string. So if I actually go to, to Amazon uh, Web Services, uh, I can very quickly uh, log in into my account. And in the buckets, I have here the different buckets. For this particular application, uh, I'm using this FM end-to-end -end bucket. And in this bucket, I have this file. So you can actually see that this file uh, contains 12 bytes. This is hard-coded into my application. It's actually uh, read from the, uh, from the configuration file, the name of the bucket, and also the name of this file I'm using uh, to keep data. So this is something that really is very much like a names of a database tables in a database. So something that typically your uh, client application will not contain any DDL code to create or destroy uh, or drop tables. So now if I uh, run this application, so this is actually the text that could have been this um, XML from a, from a client data set, but I click on uh, save to the cloud. Uh, if I now rerun the application and click load from cloud, I can see the end-to-end -end has been uh, retrieved. In the fourth scenario, I'm using uh, SOAP web services. So, uh, so here I have a server application. So this server application uh, is just a traditional SOAP web server. I have created this using file, new, other um, web services, SOAP server application. And uh, so this is where you can actually specify the interface. So my interface is actually, again, just two methods, save to data file and load from data file. And uh, the implementation is very straightforward. Uh, I have a local file on the server text file. Uh, so um, basically, uh, whatever string uh, is passed to the save to file, uh, it is written into, the, into this uh, text file. And uh, load from data file does the opposite, just uh, reads the contents of the string if, uh, if the file exists on the server. So in this way, uh, I have the similar functionality. So this is my server side uh, functionality. Uh, if I run this uh, application, I can actually see that this is just a, a web server. Uh, so this is SOAP web server. You can see the test page, the marine adventure. Uh, this is the WSDL file that defines the functionality of my server, just save to file and load from file. Uh, so that's my that's my client. Uh, you can actually now see there is a save to soap and load from soap. In order to create this client, I have run the um, import uh, WSDL uh, wizard uh, pointing uh, to the to the server, uh, and this generated for me uh, this uh, unit. Okay, so this is the unit uh, generated from this uh, running server. And it provides a global function get marine adventure. So that's what I'm using uh, for storing data. Uh, if I want to save data to my uh, service, that's what I'm calling save to data file. 
and I'm also doing the opposite load from a data file. I can click on Save to Soap. I can stop this application, uh, run it again, load from Soap. The uh, last two scenarios are uh, related to, to data snap. Uh, so um, first, I'm first I'm going to uh, do a scenario five uh, with just a data file. Uh, so in this uh, scenario, I have a data snap server uh, providing uh, the functionality uh, to store and uh, load data. Again, this is the same functionality, but now exposed as a data snap server. So data snaps uh, servers can be standalone or can be web applications. Uh, they have uh, plenty of uh, scalability options. That's my server, and my client is uh, again the form scenario with um, the same user interface, but now with a functionality to save to, da to data file and load from data file. The, ser the server was generated using file new, uh, other, and data snap server application. So this creates a, a data snap uh, standalone application and uh, functionality is straightforward. And the client uh, was generated running the new data snap client module wizard. Uh, so to my existing user interface, I have generated uh, two units. Uh, so there is one unit is a class. This is a client classes unit. So this is a, a unit generated by the data snap proxy pro generator. Uh, and also a second unit is with a, a SQL connection. So this in my unit, I can just use these two units in code and call method save data and load data. I first run the server like this and now I can run the client if I specify that Delphi rules we know this save to data snap server uh, run it again so in this way I can also uh, persist the uh, data uh, using data snap so that were th these were the five uh, scenarios I have one uh, bonus scenario just to show you the possibilities of, of, of data snap my uh, scenario uh, for broadcasting. Uh, so that's a slightly different scenario. It's not so much uh, demonstrating uh, storing data, uh, but rather uh, in this scenario, I'm showing that you can use data snap uh, for achieving peer-to-peer uh, -peer, uh, communication between uh, clients. Uh, you can uh, asynchronously notify clients uh, you can uh, communicate to a particular callback on a particular client machine. So this is an um, interesting addition because in uh, multi-tier scenarios, you uh, typically have uh, one or more server applications accessed by uh, many concurrent clients. So all these clients are competing to change something uh, in data. So if there is a change, it's uh, useful to be able to notify other clients that the data has changed so they can uh, refresh and get the up-to-date uh, data. So in this scenario, uh, I have um, three applications. I have a, a server. It just the broadcasting functionality is actually built into the data snap uh, functionality. If I run this server, uh, you can actually see uh, in the data explorer uh, that uh, my uh, server its uh, functionality is visible uh, as uh, stored procedures. You can actually see that here I have uh, many uh, methods that I can use to, for example, uh, broadcast to channel, uh, or I can uh, broadcast object to channel. So this is these are the methods I'm using uh, to uh, communicate from one client to another. Uh, so uh, I have two clients, uh, one uh, traditional uh, VCL client and one uh, FireMonkey client. So um, VCL could maybe first I'm going to run my uh, VCL client and uh, my second client that talks to the same functionality is a FireMonkey client. Uh, so now I have two clients uh, talking to the server application. So server uh, is running uh, somewhere here. So both my clients are connected to, uh, to the server. Uh, so you can actually uh, for example, uh, do a broadcast. So when I click on this broadcast um, button, the contents of the edit uh, will be 
broadcast it to all the connected clients. So here I can actually uh, click on broadcast so you can see that my VCL application has received notification from my FireMonkey application. I can also do uh, the opposite click and broadcast from my VCL application and now the same uh, functionality is there. So this is very basic demo but it shows a possibility that you can from one client you can notify server uh, and other clients and that something interesting has happened on the server. I, I have a client uh, data module in my client data module. Uh, I have also uh, creating in code the TDS client callback channel manager. So this is a mm, class uh, on, the on the client that you can use uh, to uh, do uh, asynchronous callbacks.